I don't know. I'm just happy to be here. I think I think if you're just psyched to be at a race, to be present, um, to be part of, you know, this is. I like to think of this is like my my epic romance with triathlon, right? So like it started off. It, we were kind of on again, off again. Like we had a tumultuous start, and then we kind of really fell in deep. Had a little breakup for a while, you know. Just like we've gone through these highs and lows, but like I've found the sweet spot. We're we're past the honeymoon phase, and we're like, you know, we're in it. We're in it for the long haul, triathlon and I, and really like, Cone is a celebration of that, because you know, this is this is what triathlon is all about for so much of the sport. You know, Olympics, freaking awesome, but it's about the Olympics. Cone is about triathlon, so. I think because I'm so excited to be here and because I love the sport so much, just to be able to celebrate it for nine hours, um, I think that's pretty special. Yeah, I, I think... Um, you know, like a lot of people, I grew up watching on NBC, uh, you know, Kona coverage. You know, for me, it was watching Polly Newby Fraser and just seeing her throw down in her fluorescent two-piece, um, you know, back in the day. And but you know, I was I was a little kid, so of course the idea of doing Ironman distance seemed insane. And the more I got into triathlon, the more insane it seemed. Um, and then. I guess, you know, kind of got distracted by that Olympic stuff for for a while, but always in the back of my mind I thought, you know, this is a crazy, crazy race in absolutely insane conditions, um, but I have to do it. I think, uh, um, I think the, the bug didn't really hit me until last October. I just, I woke up and I realized that um, I had to do this race. You know, I, I wouldn't consider my career complete unless I raced Kona and we're not talking like showing up in the start line and being a number. Um, I wanted to be here, be fit, be ready to, to throw down a bit, um, you know, but it's Kona. You never know what's going to happen.
Yeah, I, I think one of the benefits of coming from IT racing is that you get used to racing the best. And why not race some of the best people in the world? I mean, Sarah Crowley was third here last year. Danielle obviously is a beast. She's won Kona a few times. She's, you know, arguably the, the most dominant Ironman athlete right now. Um, I just, you can't argue it. She is the most <laughs> dominant right now. But we'll see what happens on Saturday, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, coming from ITU, we would race each other all the time. I'm not, I'm not scared of racing the best. It, it was a good way to kind of gauge, um, you know, where I was going to be, but ultimately it was more about the race itself. So I knew Ironman Frankfurt, the timing was good. I needed basically as much timing, as much time as possible to get fit. I really didn't start to get fit until June, so I needed that extra buffer of, of you know, a month or two to be able to um, honestly cover the distance. Like, up until June, my coach and I were like, oof, this Iron Man thing, this might be a mistake because you're in terrible shape. Um, but by the time June rolled around, we thought I had a chance. So yeah, if you're gonna do an Iron Man, you better have it be a fun one, in my opinion. Um, Frankfurt, it's a four lap run course. I've ne I had, at that point I'd never run more than 18 miles. So I knew, you know, I needed something to get me through. Um, four lap run course, kind of like ITU. So good spectator support to kind of carry me through. Um, you know, the, the bike was, is rolling. You know, it's a, it's a challenging enough course to make it fun. I didn't want to flat pancake, boring highway race. I wanted something with character and yeah, definitely Frankfurt delivered. Uh, so I started working with Dan Lorang, my, my current coach, uh, I think back in December. And he only coaches a few athletes. Basically he's like, Sarah, I'll coach you if you have a big goal. And I'm like, Dan, I have a big goal. It's Kona. He's like, okay, I'm on board. Um, you know, he's, he's pretty legit. He's pretty legit. That, that Jan Ferdino guy, I guess, is coached by him. Um, Ani Howe, you know, it, he knows his stuff. I think the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, obviously Dan's a really good guy, really smart guy, but he understands the ITU context. So he, he has coached ITU athletes, he's successfully transitioned them to long course, and we were talking about trying to get me from pretty unfit to ready to roll in, you know, only a handful of months and I trusted that he understood my background well enough to be able to optimize that time. How do I know I'm ready? Uh, so it's Kona. You never know if you're ready. Here's what I know. I'm healthy. I've been consistently training. You know, since June I've been building my fitness. Uh, what else do I have going for me? I've been here for about a month. So I, I know the conditions, I know the course. Um, Number five, I'm super relaxed. And I think that, you know, it's a long day. So if I can continue to be patient and relaxed, um, I think that's beneficial. Uh, number six, uh, I don't know. I'm just happy to be here.